ladies and gentlemen, Geek Alert. Yes, um, a couple of fairly significant software upgrades have happened in the uh, recent weeks, so I thought I'd take a very quick look at them. This is not a comprehensive review, it's just a sort of composer's eye view of what is there in there for us. The two in question are Contact has gone up to Contact version 6 from Native Instruments, and Cubase has gone up to version 10. So whole digit upgrades are a bit of a kind of <coughs> roll of drums. Um, because you're all expecting something pretty exciting. Um, they are exciting, but in a slightly subdued sort of way. Let me explain. Let's start with contact. Um, <coughs> to be honest, at first sight, here we go, here's the new version of contact, um, there isn't an enormous amount new to see. Um, it looks pretty much like the last version um, there's and the truth of the matter is that the only the really important di that, okay there's a couple of really important differences um, the vast majority of the important differences are in the way uh, in the facilities available to people like Spitfire and, and um, 8DO and Cine samples, people who sample developers because they can now use wavetables and all kinds of other exciting things which will ultimately make this, their product, better for us. And so there'll be a whole new generation, hopefully, of um, interesting new instruments which will make us really excited. From a user's point of view, I mean, they've moved things around a little bit, um, but honestly, nah. There isn't a, an enormous amount um, in here which um, to, to light your fire, but there are a couple of very significant things. Um, firstly, look, here's the old one. It's called Contact 5. Here's the new one. It's just called Contact. That is the most significant thing as far as you're concerned. Why? Because if I load up a template like this one, um, which has got hundreds of instances of Contact 5 in it, Installing Contact 6 will not replace those um, instances. Now they've called it Contact without a version number. Every time they release an upgrade, it's going to overwrite the one which was there before. So when you load up a template, which was built with 100 um, instances of Contact 5, it will automatically um, upgrade them all to Contact 6. This is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing, obviously, because you don't have to rebuild your template and you've got the latest version of content running, and how, well, you know, what's not to like about that? It's a bad thing, because suppose the latest version is not fully compatible with all the instruments, or something like that, then it's going to be a bit more of a faff um, to completely uninstall that and reinstall the old version, etc. Um, there were instances, for example, um, when they first went to native access, where some old libraries needed updating and the manufacturers just couldn't be bothered for whatever reason and so they stopped working so you'd kind of quite like to keep the old version of contact around so you could run you know old versions like contact 4 even um, so this will stop that happening but it will make upgrades to the latest version much easier uh, going forward so i think overall this is a really good idea and i'm really looking forward to seeing what Sample developers uh, can make of the new toys, which Native Instruments have been good enough to put inside um, contact for them. Now, you may have noticed, doo -doo, here is, oh, Cubase version 9. That's not right. This is Cubase 10. Hang on. <laughs> doo -doo. <laughs> I am running Cubase 10. Uh, I'm not running on live projects yet um, because if this is, as you can see, 10.0.5. And if you were working really fast and you've got lots of things going on, it is a very silly idea to upgrade to a whole particularly big one like this without really being sure that it's all settled down. And I tend to wait until 0.1, so 10.1, then I'll kind of move on to this. But there's a lot of cool new stuff in 10, um, which is really interesting. Um, drag and drop, look at this. You can now, I mean, these are general things. And I would say, okay, from a film composer's point of view, there's a limited amount in here which is of interest. Um, but in general, the whole program has got some cool new stuff. If anything, it's very clear that this upgrade is aimed at EDM producers, song producers, 
I know, this whole drag and drop thing on the right, which I was about to show you, for example, um, is sort of reminiscent of Ableton Live. You can just drag in um, an instrument like that, any of uh, both native instruments and instruments and third party ones. And look, if you want to give it a little picture, do you see this? Look, what's this called? How cool is that? I like that. <laughs> so now, now I can see it. And uh, little things like that make me happy. I'm sorry. It's, it's just how it is. And um, you can do the same with um, effects and all that kind of thing. This is all very cool. Um, but again, it's not absolutely focused on what we do. Um, the um, other most significant thing from, well, it's a couple of, there's a couple of big sort of structural things which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but um, for example, OK, let's get uh, the mix console now. Um, supports um, snapshots. And look, you can just take a, a snapshot. So if, for example, you've got a particular mix set up which you want to move around, you go snapshot, stunk, and it does it. Then you move everything around again, uh, or move them back to where they were to start with, and then you recall the snapshot and uh, recall snapshot one, and bonk. There, and it's done. So that's a really good thing. That makes mixing a lot easier. It's, it's really you know, um, a very useful productivity tool. And productivity is something which film composers are very interested in. So that's a good thing. Um, the other thing, if you work on large projects which you have to export, look, um, multi-track audio files, it used to support just OMF files. Now it supports AAF. This for those who know what this means, this is a big deal. Um, so if you're exchanging complex multi-track edited um, 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 projects with Pro Tools or Final Cut or any of these other things, um, I'm pretty sure Final Cut supports AAF. Um, the, the AAF thing is the latest uh, version of this particular protocol, and it's a big deal. That absolutely will make life a lot easier for people um, sharing projects around with other people. The other thing is um, you can now import um, movies which are not MP4s. Look, so for example, uh, let's find a... Uh, if I go... if In the old days, if you tried to import a QuickTime movie, it was so uninterested in that. But now, look, it'll, take, it'll bring it in, and that's absolutely fine. So... Um, it's greater um, facility to do that. All that is really, really cool. Uh, yes, there is an elephant in the room. We still can't export movies. Please, Steinberg. Please, it just wastes hours and hours of our time. We're very grateful for all the stuff in here. Um, but some time ago, um, they removed the ability to be able to replace audio in a movie. Every other door, even little free doors, everybody can bounce out a movie. Cubase can't. So it, this is absolutely something they need to get on top of. They've built in some cool things like VR tools for games producers, but you can't bounce out a movie. So I think we just need to reconfigure our priorities a bit. For And I know that this is largely sort of for EDM people and song producers and people like that, but... Do us a favor, please allow us to export a movie. One of the bigger things in this, let me just show you, one of the bigger things in, in this um, fantastic uh, upgrade, because it is a really fantastic upgrade. I like it. And I mean, you'll see lots of little things like um, a lot of the icons have changed and things, so it's a bit clearer what you're dealing with. Um, th th there's a lot more, um, uh, there's more. Um, contextual menus are more contextual, um, so everything's a bit clearer. One of the big ones for people um, is the ability to, uh, is what they do with uh, the vary audio. So, um, for example, if you uh, use um, vary audio, this thing here, okay, this now is, the version three of this is extraordinary. So if you listen to this little uh, hang on, let me just uh, bear with me for one second. All right, here we go. What's going on here? You know. Okay. 
Okay, so that's a, a nay fruit. Just suppose, I'll show you how good it is, because you just drag them all back. To, if you, you can drag them all to one pitch, and it sounds like one note. Uh, so you heard what that sounded like. I mean, this is a slightly silly example, but it gives you an idea of how powerful this pitch shifting technology is in here and how easy it is to use. <laughs> <laughs> completely ridiculous. I'm, I'm very, very sorry for having done that. And you've got a lot more control over things. You can, uh, whereas in the old days you you had to use, um, you could you could do lots of things like shift formant and straighten curve and things like that. Now you're able to do that inside. Uh, look, if I drag that down, I can st t get rid of some of the pitch warbling and things. Uh, and there's other things you can do in here along with um, form. So this is, uh, although it's mainly aimed, and there's a, a, a vocal lines, uh, all kinds of really clever stuff goes on. It's mainly aimed at song producers, and it's mainly aimed at um, um, you know EDM artists and things like that. However, um, there's enormous amount of potential there for uh, film composers who are interested in um, sound design and stuff. So, to sum up, uh, Contact 6 is the biggest news in Contact 6 is what the sample producers will do with the new facilities and the fact that it's no longer called Contact Number, it's just called Contact, which will have a big impact on people's usability and upgrades going forward. Cubase 10 is mostly aimed at songwriters and EDM artists and mixers and things like that. But, and all the enhancements they've added for that are great for film composers as well. Um, AAF Exchange is really a um, big one for people who know what it is and care. Um, it's suppo the support for um, QuickTime movies and other formats is really, really good. And um, the two things which are, are really disappointing, and one I've been mentioned, which is the fact that we still can't export movies from Cubase and the lack of Bezier curves, um, those kind of um, really smooth curves when you come to edit, because it still does it as a little series of dots. I'm, I'm absolutely sure that Cubase are listening loud and clear to um, the film community, and we will see all this coming along in 10.1, won't we? I am eternally optimistic. So look, I hope you find that useful. And uh, if you have any other little um, things which you've noticed you want to draw to other people's attention, then please obviously uh, leave a message underneath this video. And if you want to stay in touch with us, obviously subscribe to this channel because we'd love to see you again. And if you want to download our um, free uh, PDF guides to how to write film music, just join the list below. I mean, if you join the list, then we send you all kinds of other stuff as well. Like we do special offers and things to the, and other free micro courses and things. So you're not just getting the how to write film music thing. You're getting, you're becoming part of the family. And you can leave any time, just like you can't with families. That analogy doesn't work so well. Anyway, um, hope you find it useful and I'll see you again very soon.